and and why how do I want to say this why software development for organizations now is a lot more complicated than it used to be a lot more going on all right think you know 10 years ago all right or five years ago even before the real mobile boom all right there was your website all right well, I'm, I'm talking about software that you're making available to the public. We'll, we'll disregard internal software for now, like something that you would write for your organization that's used only inside your organization. But you have your website. Now, for, not, on, not fortunately, but unfortunately things weren't always simple back then because if you go back far enough, there were issues, big browser compatibility issues, far bigger browser compatibility issues than we even see now. So you may have had to do some tweaks for Internet Explorer versus, at the time, Netscape. But still, your world was pretty simple. You had to develop a website and you had to maybe account for some issues brought on by browser compatibility. This would be, say, the pre-mobile boom, which, I don't know, definitely 10 years ago, probably five years ago, before mobile got to be as widespread as it is. Now, now consider what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to develop a website you might have smaller browser, browser compatibility issues than you used to on the desktop because things were really bad in, in the old days. Um, but you have the possibility of also developing a mobile version of the website. All right. Even in that is sort of an oversimplification because you may actually develop a version for a tablet, a version for a phone, a version for a high-end phone versus low-end phone, and so on. So you may, maybe a better way to draw this would be your website that accommodates a variety of different configurations, whether it be a desktop, tablet, high-end phone, etc. And really, a big part of the class up to this point was to say, okay, ideally, we don't want this effort to be like four times as much as making a website. All right? In other words, if we have to make four versions of our website, we don't want that to be four times as expensive, four times as much code, four times as difficult as making one version of it. And we've studied a lot of techniques that allow us to do that. The, the, the progressive enhancement, where we take a page and we progressively involve more and more style sheets in it. We talk about Wurfle, where we can query the platform's capabilities and, and customize a page through some server-sided code for that. Um, we talked about PHP include files. We talked about redirecting. We talked about a lot of different things that hopefully developing multiple versions of the website or, web, or websites that can accommodate a variety of different platforms isn't as big of a nightmare as it could be. All right, So that's what we've done so far. But we've neglected to look at the other end of the spectrum and that is the app end of the spectrum. The two biggest players of that, of course, are Apple and Android, iOS and Android. But there are other tools as well, BlackBerry, Windows, mobile, and so on. Now, we did a, um, we did a, a information session prior to these classes launching. I think it was approximately a year ago. 
all right, where we brought in a guy who works for travel centers, who, who it, works in an IT department where they do this. And his thought was that they would develop a tool for Apple, they would develop a tool for Android, but they'd also have their mobile website. And their mobile website would sort of be their none of the above. So in other words, if you're on a Windows phone or a Blackberry, we're not going to develop an app for you because you're not that big of a, a percentage of the marketplace, but you can still access us via uh, the mobile browser. And that seems to be a reasonable strategy. But still, look at what we've done and look how we've muddied the waters. Even under that approach, we need potentially three big things done. We need a website that can handle a variety of platforms and a variety of configuration. We need an app for iOS and we need an app for Android. Why do we need an app? Why can't we just send people to the mobile website? Why do we need an app? Some people don't have constant internet connections. Yeah, because some people don't have constant internet connections. That's one thing that an app can provide that uh, internet uh, it, it's harder to provide. I won't say it's impossible to provide. You can use more resources of the phone if it's not. You can, use, you can potentially use me more resources of the phone. Absolutely, you, you can integrate with that. Um, good thing you're not in my morning Android class because I'm having trouble using the camera in the one thing I'm trying to do. But <laughs> since you're not, I'll say yes, absolutely, you can use the resources uh, of the camera. The other thing too is just plain old convenience. You know, if you think about navigating uh, to a website, opening up a browser, and typically on a mobile phone, the browser will open up to the web page that you were looking at last. You'd have to then go and either pull a bookmark out of a list of bookmarks or type in the URL. Frankly, I hate typing on mobile phones, and that's a pain. So much better just to have a little icon on your desktop, or not desktop, on your screen, on your home screen to click on it and get to the weather channel to see what the weather is as opposed to going through the process of navigating it, navigating through. The other thing I would say, so, so the convenience to users, some people just like apps and it's more straightforward and they're not comfortable with browsing. One of the big reasons that Apple and the iPhone hit is because those apps made things so simple for people, all right, to just go click, you know, to install it, the icon, and, and you're, you're in business. So, we have the potential then of developing for at least three different solutions. A web solution, an iOS solution, and an Android solution. The sad thing is, too, is that to a large degree, both of, uh, or all three of these require different skills. All right? A mobile website is going to be done in what we'll call the web standard languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. An Android application is going to be done in Java, which is distinct from JavaScript. It's different than JavaScript. Lastly, Apple is different altogether and Objective-C is used. Now, if you think about it, you're the hiring manager, you're the IP department. To find someone that possesses all those skills is going to be a challenge, to find an individual that has those. So what do you do? Hire two developers, three developers, contract it out? It's really hard to say because you need a variety of skills to get that done. Enter something called PhoneGap. What PhoneGap is, is a way to take your HTML5 pages. Remember, one of the big benefits of HTML5 is it gives a better mechanism for embedding things like animation and video and audio and all that. But, what PhoneGap does is allows you to take your HTML5 application written in HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript and convert it into 
an Android app, an iOS app, and maybe even some of those obscure ones that we talked about or less used ones like a Windows Phone and, and Blackberry and so on. Now, PhoneGap itself comes sort of in two flavors. There's, there's two things that you can, you, there, there's two ways, there's, there's two kinds of solutions that deal with PhoneGap. One of them is where you download some code and you incorporate it into your IDE and then you publish your application the same way. So for example, those of us that have done Android development, we could download the PhoneGap libraries, include them in our Eclipse, and then go and take advantage of those in creating our Android application. What we would do then is we would make our HTML pages as resources, just like we right now use images as resources or, or other files as, as resources. So we could download that framework, that PhoneGap framework, use our web pages as resources, and essentially take our application and, or I'm sorry, take our web pages and turn it into an Android application, just as we do now through Eclipse, and we could compile it and test it and run it and do all that. There's even libraries then that allow us via HTML to interact with some of the devices unique characteristics such as the, the camera and, and so on. Let's imagine though we had an even more straightforward application, maybe one that didn't use any of the phone's extensive features. Maybe like for example, your, uh, the, the assignment you do, you've been working on of the map. All right? That really doesn't use any of the phone's features. It uses the get location um, HTML5 thing, but most phone browsers support that. All right, you don't have to worry about writing your own code to do that. You can simply get the location. Other than that, you're not interacting with a camera or anything like that. So you really just need a way to take and convert that HTML that you've developed into an application. And you're not doing anything fancy, and you're not really integrating with any of the more advanced aspects of the platform. For things like that, there is what's called PhoneGap Build. So, there's PhoneGap and PhoneGap Build. The difference between the two is with regular old PhoneGap, you download libraries of stuff and you integrate it into the platform that you want to do. So, for example, you would download uh, the library for Android if you're doing Android development. You could download the uh, iOS platform and, and integrate it into the, the Apple's SDK. With PhoneGap Build, you don't have to mess with any of that. It's an online service and you can go and you can publish your code, all right, and then you can create an app from that code, all right, with literally a click of a button. It's very straightforward. All right, so the focus today is going to be on creating an Android application via PhoneGap, all right? So, what do I need to do that? Alright, what do I need to do that? Well, I need some HTML files. And the home page has to be called index.html, which is pretty standard to call a home page. So I'm going to call it index.html, and I'll need whatever, whatever other files I'm using to go in that folder or whatever. And then I'm going to need to zip this up. All right. Now, you know, the, the statement is that there is no free lunch. You know, I mean, you think of all these great services online, you know, um, that you can use for free and you wonder like, you know, well, what's the motivation and, and what do I have to give to use this for free? Sometimes it's give your email address so you'll get bombarded with, with spam, you know. Um, in this case, the rule is this. You can use PhoneGap Build for free 
And you can get one application that is private. All right? Or I, I may be confused between this and another tool that we're going to talk about. The rest of them have to be open source applications. So you have to make your source available. The people creating this did this to sort of promote open source. So one of the things you have to do is, is do that. Now, PhoneGap Build uses another service called GitHub. G-I-T-H-U-B. And that's a tool that is used for managing versions of open source applications. And that is a little program that you need to download. All right. So you'll download it, you'll create an account on that, and then you should be good to go. Let's go through and let's actually do this. So, I'm going to go here and let me find a page. find a page I want to do this for. Why well, looky here? This in a nutshell is my version of the page that you folks have been working on. Now, keep in mind what our goal is here. Our goal is to take this HTML document and present it like a mobile application. So what I likely will do is I will likely take and use the, J, uh, the, uh, the jQuery mobile framework with this. All right, Because then it will give my application a mobile look. All right. So I'll need to include all those files and so on and so forth. So you'd incorporate those files and those libraries in your code just like you would do otherwise. I'm actually going to create a new folder called Spring 2013 just so that we don't lose track of this with some of my old stuff from when I did this last semester. So I put that in here. Let me go to GitHub. And GitHub is a place for you to put like a repository of stuff. Let's see if it's installed. And it is. So I can go here and I can go to GitHub. There's a PC and a Mac client, so whatever you have, you can you can use it. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm logged in as me. All right. If you weren't logged in, you'd have to log in. If you didn't have an account, you'd have to go and create an account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new repository here. What this is going to allow me to do is take my code on my local machine and create effectively a repository for an open source project that the code can be then put up and other people can share and build off of it and, and create forks in the distribution and so on. So, I'm going to click Add to create a new repository. It'll ask me for the name, and I'll call it Spring 2013. Now, to keep this code private, I have to have a premium account with GitHub. 
I think I was getting a little confused when I was talking before. I don't have a private uh, account or a premium account at GitHub. Therefore, I will just, I will not keep it private. I will, I will allow it to be public. And then I can go and click create. Now I can go in this repository and notice that there are three files to be committed. All right. I've created this for the first time and when I create it, notice it created in addition to my HTML file, it created a couple of files that it's going to use to do its thing and to manage it. So I have to go and commit these changes. The idea is if I make changes and I decide to go on the wrong path, uh, I'm going on the wrong path, I can like, get rid of those changes and, and sort of roll them back. So I'm going to go and I'm going to commit these changes and I'm going to say initial load and we'll click commit. All right. Then I'm going to click publish. And what Publish is going to do is it's going to take my committed code, my version 1.0 if you will, and it will publish it up to GitHub server. Now that it's up on GitHub server, the world can see it. All right? And more importantly than that, PhoneGap Build can see it. Because with PhoneGap Build, I'm going to build a repository, or, or I need a repository on GitHub to create, um, to create uh, my application. So I'll click publish here. It publishes it. All right. Here's essentially telling it what all it did. Now let's go to the GitHub website and look at it there. I'll go and log in. I sure hope I remember my account info. All Okay, must use my other email account. Okay, this contains a temporary link. I'm going to log on here and reset my password. Let's contain one lowercase letter, one number, and be at least seven characters long.
Okay. So my password was was reset. So I can now go and look and I can look at my repositories, which look like garbage because GitHub doesn't support IE 7 or 8. So let's go and open up Chrome. All right. Are some repositories and explore. I can go and look at and see my repositories. I have a total of eight repositories, this being the last one. All right. So I went and I've created and I published it. So now it's up there. What's the benefit of that? The benefit of that is now I can go to PhoneGap Build and I can build my application. All right, so let's go to PhoneGap Build. All right, Adobe's PhoneGap Build. Let me sign on. Wow, I got the password right. And I have a list of apps. These are all the test apps that I've worked on. I can go and click New App. Now, I have a choice. For a brand new app, if I'm going to make it public or an open source app, um, I have to use a public repository on GitHub, which is exactly what I down, uh, uploaded a minute ago. If it's private, I could upload a zip file. All right, But since this case it is public, so I'll go and click to say that I want, and there's the repository I just created. One thing you have to do, by the way, when you create this, or, or I'm sorry, when you log on, is you have to sort of sync up your phone gap build and GitHub account so the one knows where to find your, your GitHub. I now have then the name of my application and enter the description. Um, going to go click on that. Actually, I'll go click back on that. I didn't want to do that.
Oh, I'm in GitHub now. There we go. Okay, there we go. I don't know what happened. I um, it says it's ready to build. Think what I did? Yeah, I clicked on that, the GitHub uh, repository. I didn't. I, I shouldn't have wanted to do that. I should have waited until these buttons appeared, and now it's ready to build. And I can go in with a click. I can go, and it will go through. And it will actually generate the code for these different operating systems. Notice it can't do iOS. It can't do iOS because I do not have an Apple developer ID associated with my account. So it can't do it. But presumably if I was uh, an Apple developer and I would have that, I would do it. Notice how it slowly, the, the icons are becoming green. So it has finished the Android one. It has finished the Windows Phone, the HP, whatever the little I is, and it's still working on the Windows Phone. So, now, how to install this. We can go to the public page of this. I'll, I'll let the windows finish. It, there it goes. We can go to the public page. And if we click on this, we can get the code. So this will give us the APK file, which is the Android installation file. Or, I can use my little QR reader I can go and I can actually take a picture of that. And it will go and download that file. And install it. Actually, I think all it's going to do is download it. I'll have to go and install it when it's finished. Okay, it is finished. Click on it. It does give me a set of permissions that's associated with this app. I don't think that set of permissions is correct. All right. Um, the location is correct because I do ask for a location for this, but I don't ask for any contact data. I have a feeling this is just the defaults that PhoneGap creates. So I'll go and install it then. And now I have that little application that I did that's represented by that HTML file eventually will pop up. Alright, here we go. And it shows the map and it shows the different buttons for
for the business building and so on. College Center. I think I screwed up dragging the map around. There we go. But you get the idea. So, let's review the main points of this. Alright? The main points of this are First of all, the reason that we do this is to sort of leverage our web development efforts. In other words, rather than writing something custom for um, iOS and Android and all these other platforms, we can take our HTML and convert it into those kinds of apps. All right? How do we do this? Well, first of all, we need an HTML app. It has to be HTML. All right, not a PHP. So the code we're talking about is HTML. Can contain any of the web standard stuff. By web standard stuff, I mean the stuff that browsers can consume. That is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you create your app doing that. You can include, if you want to, the jQuery mobile libraries. And that way you can have your web page kind of look like an app. All right. Then... Once you've done that, get it in a folder, you need to download GitHub, create an account on GitHub, you need to create an account on PhoneGap, and then you need to sync up your PhoneGap and GitHub. All right? You then, through PhoneGap, create, I'm sorry, then through GitHub, you create a repository, or create a new repository, commit your changes, publish them, they will be made then public on GitHub. You can then log in to PhoneGap, choose that repository, and generate the applications for it. Easy as pie. It really is. It's probably more confusing to say than it is to do. So what I'd like to do, um, you guys have laptops here? Do you both have laptops? Or, yeah. And, since you probably would rather work on your own machine than, than uh, this, what I'd like you to do is simply take and go through the process of what I did with any HTML document that you have. If you don't, you know, if you don't have something, you know, something for this class, something that you have for other reasons, as long as it's HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Go in and get accounts on GitHub, get accounts on uh, PhoneGap, and then go create your repository, upload your code, generate your app. I have Android devices. I'll go and I'll uh, go get them for you to test your application on. All right?